Yo, what up guys? It's Jack and welcome back to another video and happy Sunday to everybody. And uh, I got some classic Call of Duty gameplay here with World War II and uh, hint hint, in the next gameplay you're going to see a Call of Duty game that is even more of a classic than this one that I haven't really posted very often. So hopefully for those of you guys that wanted to see something with a little bit of a different flavor, so to speak, well here you go. And uh, I'm sure some of you guys can't wait <laughs> till the end of this gameplay here to see what that game is. but. But anyway, I'm not going to spoil it for you. I'm going to keep it in suspense. But while you're in suspense, I figured I would talk about what I want to talk about today. And quite frankly, I keep on going back and forth in terms of what I want to entitle this video. I mean, should I entitle it Why Skill-Based Matchmaking is So Bad? Or do I want to entitle it The Common Misconception About Good Players in Call of Duty? I don't know. But who knows? Maybe... Maybe His Highness himself, Daifo, would probably tell me you should have titled this. You made a mistake. You suck. And he'd probably and he'd definitely be right. But anyway, um, let's get let's get into the topic here of discussion. So there is this common misconception among uh, about Call of Duty players that we don't enjoy the game unless we play well. Now that does creep up a lot when it comes to Call of Duty, but I've come to realize that there's quite more to it than that. Like for instance, I, I thought about this a lot before I decided to start making this video today. Before I have to leave for work. And the thing is that, like, it's not always about playing well. Like, it, it, looking back at World War II, like this game here, I have to be in a specific special mood to actually play this game. Because for me personally, the, the best way I could put it uh, is that World War II for me, personally, for me, is bland compared to some of the other Call of Duty titles. And it actually has nothing to do with Boots on the Ground as well. I mean, I like a Boots on the Ground game just as much as I like Advanced Movement. Sometimes I prefer one over the other, and it can go either way, because that's just the way I am as a, uh, as a Call of Duty player. Who knows? Maybe I'm a bipolar Call of Duty player. You never know. But uh, the thing is, you have to be in a special mood to, to play this game. Just like I have to be in a special mood to play the next game that you guys can see in the next gameplay, right? But it's not always about doing well. And and quite often, the more like at least half the time, my gameplays are not as solid or as dominating as this. I mean, yes, I could still win, but I still die a shit ton in this game simply because of the way the game is built. But like, for instance, looking at it from the other side of the fence, it's a very, it's, it's very, um, it's very wrongful at the same time to say, it's at least it's it's a 50 50 thing uh it's it's you can't fully say that uh that is always the case that a player has to be doing good in order for them to enjoy the game because coming up uh, a little bit of my past history as well as something else that i wanted to say that's definitely going to make sense uh when i was coming up in, in in call of duty when i was learning to become better i was getting my ass handed to me left and right but i still enjoyed the fact that okay let's see if we can get let's say 10 kills per game let's see if we can make it up to 15 or something like that or once I learned how spawns work, it's like, okay, okay, let's see if I can keep on doing better. Let's see different ways that I can rush, different routes, different class setups to play with, uh, working on my shot, yada, 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 all that stuff. And the same thing applies to a different game. Like, for instance, uh, I know for a fact, okay, this is 100% a fact. I know that if I went on to PC, right, which, again, I haven't touched a PC in terms of gaming since I was age 12. Uh... If I go on to PC and if I were to install Quake Champions, which is free to play, right, or Iron Sights, which is free to play, which is said to be like a Call of Duty clone, I guarantee you that even though I would be getting my ass handed to me left and right, I would actually enjoy, I would actually enjoy going through the grind of getting my butt handed to me and the gameplay, okay, the gameplay, listen to those words specifically, the gameplay is what keeps me coming back time and time and time again. And this is why some people that enjoy Modern Warfare's multiplayer, they like that specific gameplay that's very passive and very campy because they like that and that's what keeps them coming back. It's like a different type of Rainbow Six Siege mixed in with Call of Duty that they specifically prefer. And for me, I'm actually the opposite in terms of what I prefer. So uh, with me, it's gameplay elements that keep me coming back. It's not necessarily how well I do. And as a matter of fact, with every single Call of Duty that I touch, in the very beginning, except for maybe a couple of them, in the very beginning, I actually struggle. I am nowhere near the player that I am by the time I get into, a, by the time I reach a month uh, or two months uh, of time into the game. Okay, I'm nowhere near what I'm, what I usually usually do in the very beginning of a Call of Duty game, especially the way that I play, which is an aggressive playstyle. So. Uh, 
so the thing is like the biggest common misconception is that oh pro players are just pissed because they're not they're not playing well no or, or not pro players but just good players good players are pissed because they're not playing well it's like well there's two sides to that you know what i mean it's it's the gameplay elements and and what you are enjoying about the game specifically that makes the difference for you so like with quake champions going back to that i really like how fast paced that game is and even though i would be completely new to mouse and keyboard um I would actually enjoy that grind because even getting one freaking kill would give me the ultimate rush or having that ultimate rush of actually getting into a uh, getting into a gunfight despite the fact that I may or may not be at an advantage or a disadvantage because of my lack of knowledge, my lack of mouse and keyboard skills and all that kind of stuff. It's the gameplay elements that make me want to stick around and get better at the game and just enjoy the game. Because one of the things that I realized like yesterday, like I was playing some Black Ops 4, I played on stream and then I played a little bit off stream. And I realized, you know, obviously I use the Cordite a lot, but I realized that skill-based matchmaking is also absolutely terrible. Because if you implement skill-based matchmaking to a strict state like it is basically in Modern Warfare... All of the higher end score streaks or kill streaks, all of the other guns that are not necessarily as powerful as, let's say, uh, you know, the most powerful gun, all of those guns all of a sudden become absolutely useless because skill based matchmaking is always going to have the players that are picking the best guns. You can't, you can't experiment and you can't play with different guns and enjoy those guns. Like, for instance, I love the AN94 from Black Ops 2. I have killed over 90,000 people with the Black Ops 2 AN94. And I kid I kid you not, I have over 90,000 kills with that gun because I just enjoyed the living fuck out of it. In Black Ops 4, uh, I still do enjoy the living fuck out of it, but not as much because it's not quite as powerful. However, I did come to realize yesterday that uh, in the right hands, which are which I, I am good with the AN94, but in the right hands and with some practice and some experimentation, you can do a lot better. But the thing is, mostly, I mean, I just enjoy using a different gun that I like the iron sights, I like the recoil pattern, I like the way the gun operates. Even though it may not be one of the top tier guns in the game, I enjoy it, which is a gameplay element that keeps me coming back and makes me want to play again, as opposed to just being like, oh, I gotta use the Cordite again because that's... That's the weapon I've been using, and it's just, uh, you know, it's just the one that I enjoy, and for the most part, it's the one that I mostly enjoy, and, uh, you know, it makes the game more bland when you're just sticking to one weapon, whether whether the game has, uh, whether the game is a sweat fast or not, if you're just sticking to one weapon, or just a couple of weapons or whatnot, the game becomes very limiting and very bland, and that's one of the things that skill-based matchmaking is kind of making worse, because people are always going to be super competitive, or, you know, or, uh, let's put it this way, People are going to be forced to be super competitive because of the way the game is designed from a matchmaking standpoint to have good players go against good players and the bad players protect it as much as possible. That's just the way the cookie crumbles with this Modern Warfare thing going on right now. You see what I'm saying? So, I mean, uh, I, here I am in Modern Warfare Remastered running around with a, stu with a fucking M MP5. I mean, it, it's a good gun. It's a good gun. It's one of the better SMGs in the game. Uh, but uh, the, the thing is that like the, this game specifically is a very defensive game but I enjoy using this gun despite the fact that in a lot of engagements I'm actually at a disadvantage because a lot of engagements are actually mid to long range so I have to I have to run a, a lot more in a game that's not necessarily built uh, for rushing as much at least not in this day and age right I mean back in 2007 when this game came out it was a lot different uh, and you, you know what I mean? But but I enjoyed it. Despite the fact that I may or may not get a good score, it's just because of the way the gun feels, because of the strafing that it allows me to do or to move faster so that way I could... So it, that way it could be like uh, I'd be playing a faster version of this game even though this game is, is meant to be a lot slower. You know what I mean? It's things, it's things like that. So, uh, again, this is like a hybrid type of commentary to where I talk about a good player's biggest curse or biggest misconception and at the same time also why skill-based matchmaking is is very bad. I'm probably going to title the video why skill-based matchmaking is bad or something along those lines because it, it's probably going to get more views because skill-based matchmaking is probably the biggest talked about subject right now in this year's Call of Duty and all people are praying and hoping for is that it doesn't get implemented into the next game. It's not always because good players are afraid of going up against other good players. Now granted, there aren't that many necessarily quote-unquote legitimate good players anymore. Uh, whether it's because they have been lucky enough or fortunate enough to get the most powerful weapon in the game that happens to be DLC only, or whether it's because they're using some so sort of exploit or some sort of cheat or hack or whatnot. 
or whether they're reverse boosting or whatever the deal is. You know, there's there's very few legit players out there anymore, whether they do content creation or not. But I could tell you, as somebody that is pretty good at the game and that doesn't do all these shading th shady things, I could tell you from my perspective, it's not always about being quote unquote afraid of playing against other good players. No, it's also about your enjoyment of the game. And when you implement that, all of a sudden you can't enjoy those uh, those different class setups because you're always going to have to use a specific class setup to to play against the competitiveness of the other people that they're going to be using. Uh, the high end score streaks are going to are going to be uh, ops they're not going to be used because you're not going to be able to get enough kills before you die to reach them and everything in between, different guns and all that. So all these different guns that they put into the game all of a sudden are not going to be are hardly ever used are hardly ever used because of the the, the matchmaking so uh but anyway guys uh, i just wanted to kind of get that out there and kind of just talk about it because it's it is something that's that's it's a big misconception that good players are bitching and whining because are only bitching and whining because uh they can't play well so that way they can't enjoy the game unless they play well yes if you play well you do enjoy the game but at the same time in world war ii that gameplay that you saw i did play well but again the game was was very bland it was very bland and I did enjoy it as much as, and as soon as I thought about using the AN-94, which is a less powerful weapon in Black Ops 4, all of a sudden I enjoyed the game a lot more than I did using the Cordite. And I don't play as well with the AN-94 as I did the Cordite, simply because of the way the cookie crumbles with that game. So um, so yeah, so there's some proof for you right there. So let me know down in the comment section whether you're a good player, whether you're an average player, what are your thoughts about this? Have you ever had that kind of misconception? Did this commentary give you uh, some, some insight and a little bit of clarity? And that's it, guys. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, let me know. And if you didn't, let me know what I could do to make my videos better. Stay safe out there. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And I'll catch you guys on the next one.